Ladies and gentlemen, Moist Critical, huh? Himself, Charlie, interviewed Glorb. This is our first time ever seeing Glorb in real life. Let's get right into it, bro. Let's see what kind of spinner. I guess the honor kind of driller, and privilege of interviewing you know? one of YouTube's most mysterious and most talented artists, Glorb. Shout out to he Moist. lit Bikini Bottom on fire with some of the best music we've ever heard. And he has graced us with an interview. By the way, my Euphoria Freestyle drops tomorrow, baby. That's Thursday. The premiere should be up in a little bit. Stay tuned on my original, ch on my main channel, the Scoop Aizan channel. Where okay. he got, he gets a little emotional. He gives us a little peek behind the curtains. So we really get to see a side of Glorb that no one has seen before. I think it's also I mean, important we recognize I'm yeah. not a professional <laughs> interviewer. This is very much out of my wheelhouse. I'm just a greasy little Neanderthal who did his best to ask the most pressing questions people have been begging for answers for. So hopefully I did it justice. I really appreciate Glorb giving- Charlie looks like Jesus if he, like, like Jesus' archetype, but he has no powers. Like- <laughs> Like real world Jesus, like this, like what they depict Jesus to look like, which he actually didn't actually look like, even in the description of the Bible. But the picture that they have of the person of Jesus, this nigga look just like that shit crazy to me. Giving me I the had time to say, of day to do this interview. Hey, so it's Gorm coming at you straight from Bikini Bottom. You're in the oh. cut with me, Mr. Moise. Let's get it. Obvious question. Oh, he literally sounds like when he does the Squidward voice. I can tell that a lot of the shit that he be doing be impressions, cause I can hear his voice. So I'm, I'm sure he mixes AI with some impression. I like that. I like that. I'm glad that it's not fully AI. What drew you to make this kind of music? Why SpongeBob related what? music in general? I think it was uh, me wanting to go back into the past and bring something from back then into now. And the only way that I knew how to do that was through music and Show rap, your obviously. Face. And as well as that, like, it also came a lot from boredom, you know, this this whole thing kind of started as a bit of an in-joke with me and the homies, and from there, people started to really pay attention, and before I knew it, I'd kind of built this, uh, I guess, community of people that wanted these Spongebob raps, so, yeah, it started out as a joke, and then very quickly started to, um, heat up. You Facts. mentioned you've been doing this for a while. There's been speculation, some theories, the old tinfoil hats going around that you might be a big industry player. Can you confirm or deny these rumors? Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, definitely would have heard my main artist project, and they also listen to Gorb and probably don't, uh, haven't connected the dots that it's me. So, yeah, you know, I won't give away too much, but there's that. Oh, ah! okay, okay. He said there's a lot of people that might have heard my main project. Now, he could either just be being a little pompous, a little bravado, a little rapper-ish, and just be saying like, so, yeah, I'm, niggas that heard about me. Or he could just be doing that to throw niggas off the scent. Or what I think, he might be telling the truth. Because if not, he would just say no, nigga. <laughs> or maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. But, hey, let me find out this nigga Meek Mill or something. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> you're saying you are an industry veteran. You, you're not someone that just picked up the old SpongeBob voice changer and let it rip after, you know, graduating with a bioengineering degree or something. You've been in the scene. Yeah, so aside from the bioengineering degree, which, which I definitely have, I've also um, I've been in the industry for a while. So if you're tapped in with modern rap, you've, you've definitely heard of me. Who are you? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm Glorb, I guess. Yeah, 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 but, but like, who, who is Glorb? Well, you know, Gorb is, is Bikini Bottom's finest. I'm the top dog out here. I guess, uh, I, I guess, now nah, what you're looking for, though, my, my main identity, I've got to conceal that, but I will say this, listen, so, if you've been looking over the series for a while, and you've, you've been a fan for a while, you may have caught some breadcrumbs about little things, and maybe I've said some stuff in lyrics, or, you know, maybe something in the visuals somewhere, but I've definitely left little, uh, little breadcrumbs that might lead you to uh to who oh, i really am if that helps oh now we gotta start paying more attention to the videos i gotta find out who glorb is bro let me find out bro oh that's wait what the fuck so wait you've got your own little clues like the in there like it's national treasure that'll connect to you the glorb
Yeah, so that there's little there's little bits we've left here and there, and if people have an eye for it, they're gonna find it eventually. I think it's I just a matter of time, time to be honest, it. before it's leaked. But um, I guess that's the fun of it, right? That's such a banger, little scavenger hunt. You're gonna have like super sleuths going through there frame by frame dissecting that now. Yeah, Yo, I mean, I mean, once my address is, gets leaked and people pull up at my house, I'm probably re gonna regret making this little scavenger hunt. But um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. Uh, uh, who are your main influences? I definitely say the genre of rage music in general is a huge influence. Uh, any of these new modern rap wave sounds that we're hearing, and um, to be honest as well. Let me find out this nigga Yeet or something. Let me find out this nigga Yeet or something. Now I'm starting to think this nigga might be Yeet or something. Oh, probably my main artist project as well, but uh, obviously I can't really go into that uh, in too much detail. But yeah, just a bunch of these new synthy rage driven beats that we're hearing. A bunch of that is inspiring. There's a ton of underground artists that obviously I've got my finger on the pulse and I work with a lot of these people. So I've been listening to a lot of that stuff and just combining it with this, um, this nostalgic childhood dream. You know what I mean? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm picking like up subtle music. hints, some flavor of the gentle men in, in some of the Glorb tracks, such as our, our track Filthy. Is that, is that correct to say? Uh, yeah, I think, I think I might owe you some royalties for that one there, Charlie. <laughs> Have you ever ghost written for other artists? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done, I've done some writing work within the industry, and probably, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to come out here and act all cocky and say you want to earn my stuff, you want to earn my writing. But yeah, I've done some ghost writing for people, and obviously my main project as well. So, but that's something I really want to dive into more because throughout, I think this entire SpongeBob thing, I've really realized that I enjoy writing from the perspective of these characters or other people that exist out there. So. This whole thing has been a giant experiment in ghostwriting in a way. Awesome. Well, I love yeah. to hear that. that I makes, mean, you're clearly actually, very talented at it. No, thank you, sense. my friend. You know, that, that means a lot. I do appreciate that. So something that I think is... Well, you are... Do I hear an accent? Am I the only person that kind of hears an accent? I'm over here trying to sizer cose it is. Like, am I the only one that hears, like, an a, a, a accent? We're going to Zapruder film this shit, boy. Huh? I feel like... A little bit maybe UK, maybe Irish, maybe over there in uh, Great Britain, uh, around that area. I kind of hear a little bit of it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but... You already kind of mentioned this to me, but we'll put it on record. Has Viacom ever reached out to you? Nah, so Viacom, Viacom. haven't reached out to us Viacom? yet. Viacom? And, uh, yeah, we're hopeful in the future that when they do, it's for something insane. Like, the, the ultimate dream would be this uh, crossover Glorb show where we get to do our own thing and... You know, they're a part of it and everything, but, you know, it, it, know it's so far that. in the future, it's hard to say. Know. I just hope that when they do come to the table, uh, we can really agree on something and there's a way that we can both benefit each other because uh, it could be it could be a bit crushing if not. But, yeah, either way, at the end of the day, I'm just, um, I'm very thankful. You know, I grew up watching this show, so it is what it is. Have you faced any problems at all doing this kind of music, it's using scary. this property? Um, yeah, well, we ran into some issues early on, so me and my team, we, we basically had to deal with a group of scammers online. There was a group of these dudes in a Discord, and they ripped down my song, the, um, the Sandy song, mm-hmm. That, that dropped, that was going viral, and then they ripped that down completely, uh, offline, and they re-uploaded it, and basically stole all of the royalties from the song. Yeah, there was this big back and forth between us. They would put, uh, basically they would, what they would do is they put a copyright claim on the song, they'd rip it down from my Spotify, then they would re-upload back to my Spotify, but their version. So they would basically be able to claim all the royalties. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. They need to figure out a way when it comes to stuff like that to, to stop this. Cause I'm not gonna lie to you. That is a thing that people do. Like, believe it or not, like if you don't have like a major label backing you stuff, even sometimes when you do, some of these uh, third, second-hand uploading things like uh, CD Baby, um, all them other things, people will do dirty things like this, like copyright your own music and then try to... It's, it's nasty, bro. It's nasty. And there's not... I mean, like, people need to figure out how to... Them streaming services need to figure out how to fix that because that is crazy. And this this speaks to a, a way larger issue with Spotify in general where independent artists don't really have any protection against this stuff so exactly. and like, like for example with the gentleman are you independent yeah that's just us yeah so in that case and this is going to sound horrible to say but I could just go on your Spotify put a fake copyright claim in and say oh Charlie used my snare at 55 seconds like even if you did it and then Spotify essentially they legally have to believe that 
and they have to rip the song down. And it's this goes sad. for independence. If you, it's a different story if you're with a major label, but this speaks, like I said, this speaks to a, a way larger issue with Spotify and the music industry in general, where you basically have a bunch of these kids going around, scammers, literally just taking people's money, and they can target anyone that is an independent. And hell, even some major, major label artists get uh, hit with this. So that's what we dealt with, which was... It was insane. No, there's some dirty scoundrels out there for sure. And I have no doubt you probably handled them accordingly. They're probably dead now and buried would be my guess. Uh, don't go digging in the jellyfish fields. I'll leave it at that. To what degree do you, like, how does the AI work here? Do you sing the track and then put an AI filter over it? Is it entirely AI he and you're just inputting like the, the bars? How does it work? So I've seen a lot of comments, uh, especially on TikTok about this, where people, uh, they're saying like, AI is getting so scary. It's now writing these full songs. But no, um... I'm writing these songs as Gorb, and then in terms of the beats, 80% of the beats are made uh, by me and my team. So it's it's all done in-house. Um, we're oh, all running cool. that stuff. There's some beats like the uh, the bottom two beat. A lot of people pointed that one out. That was a beat that uh, we found early on, and we, we got the license to and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, we've used some beats online and other stuff like that. But for the most part, everything you hear is coming, uh, I guess, from the Glorb factory, which is basically me and the homies. So yeah. And when it comes to the voices of that, so right now you hear me as uh, Dankton, but basically what oh. I do is I make sure that I hit the voices as close as I can. So when it comes to Mr. Krabs, I'm going, you know the crab like money. You know, we're doing it as close <laughs> as we sounds... can and we're voice acting. So is there a filter on his voice right now? Because the way he switched over to Krabs, he sounded just like me. He's, he's... His impressions are pretty spot on. I'm still confused where he ends and the AI starts. It 95% of the way there and letting the AI uh, do the rest. Yeah, I think that's what makes it so crisp. I think if it was entirely AI doing most of the work, it wouldn't sound as clean. That's fine. It wouldn't I knew hard. it right away. Yeah. There's some people who do that SpongeBob stuff where you can tell it's mostly AI. And those ones are, are, are like the wackest ones to me because you can... I, I'm pretty sure y'all have seen me react to some of them where I go, nigga, that's not how human beings talk. I can tell this is fed through AI. Yeah, some of them where I go like, man, you got to figure out a way to add more human. Like I can feel the AI in this and it just makes it whacker to me. Yeah, I, it'd probably sound like shit. I think that's real. why Glorb sounds so, so how good. How many people have reached out to you for a feature by now? I imagine you've got a Rolodex full of some heavy hitters coming at you for some Glorb features. Oh, yeah, well, no, aside from Drake, we uh, we keep getting hit up by this guy, the, these guys called the, the Gentlemen, I think they're called, but uh, never mind about that. But, yeah, no, look, we, we get a ton of emails from kids, and it's there's a bunch of younger kids that are artists trying to come up that really want to feature, and then there's also some established acts as well, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's very hard to bring features into the Glorb universe because, yeah. obviously, it, it just comes with a bunch of uh, moving parts. We have to figure out ways to bring it in, but... I mean, hell, man, it, it just makes me happy to see all these emails from kids. Even if they're just wanting a feature, I know that in some way I've inspired them. And, you know, we get emails as well of people saying, like, man, you're, we play your stuff in our college dorms, or we all love you, we listen to you on the school bus, or whatever it is. I, it's yeah, just so cool. cool to see so much love and so much uh, passion for this project that I've created. So, yeah, it's awesome. But in terms of features, man, I mean, we might have to make a little exception for the gentleman. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, huh? All right, well, that's pretty exciting, though. There could be a Glorb feature. You could do, like, a Hatsune Miku-style live concert at some point. Is that something you're thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go too much into detail, but... Um, Glorb the VTuber is crazy. All I can say in regards to live shows is uh, keep your eyes peeled. Something's coming. Have you ever thought of branching out beyond SpongeBob for this style of music? Is there any other, like, properties you have your sights set on, or is Glorb always going to be in the SpongeBob universe? Yeah, so there's Great a fabled uh, Family Guy track out there, and I've never released it, but uh, it, I, I put a snippet into the Discord early on, and then ever since then, it's whenever someone new joins the Discord, they eventually come to realize that there's this secret Family Guy track that's hidden, and, you know, I, I love it, though. Everyone in the Discord really wants that song, so eventually, uh, maybe. I, I might uh -oh. drop that song, but once you involve expands. all these other different... Uh, I feel like once I bring other shows into this, then it kind of convolutes the storyline that I'm I'm currently trying to go through. And I also just really see, and I'm glad that I said this before. Glorb should be like a story too. That's really what I, I really want to see this whole SpongeBob Bikini Bottom storyline played out. I really want to tell my story and what I have in, in mind for the future of the Glorb universe. So I kind of want to get that done. But there's definitely a part of me that wants to really crack into some other stuff. But you know, at the end of the day. 
I always have to keep in mind, the more IP I go after, let's say I do Simpsons or Family Guy, you know, the more problems it, it can bring into to this whole thing. So I have to be very careful, you know? That's a really good point. That's the deep cut glore blur right there. But you're right. If you started targeting other IPs that might not be as chill as Viacom right now, you're collecting like the Infinity Stones of lawsuits. So that could be pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that, they'll punch my shit in for sure. So then you mentioned the, the storyline here. Why don't you tell everyone what the whole story is for the Glorb universe here that you've crafted? Because it's more than just music. You are actually telling stories. Like, they have, like, a continuing plot thread that runs through them. No, 100%. And I think this whole Glorb universe really just came to life once I, once I sat down and started to write from the perspective of these characters. It's like they took on a life of their own. So, you know, it's... It's this whole world inside of SpongeBob that's almost a continuation of uh, how their lives have gone since we left the show as kids. So since they we've stopped watching guesses. it, we've grown up. It's almost like these characters have grown up alongside us and they've gotten into just as much shit as we have. So, you know, obviously- You nigga said just as much shit as we have. Nigga, way more shit than anybody has. There ain't, there ain't a, nigga, you can go to the most dangerous part of Old Block. Ain't nobody had a mechanized Goddamn Gundam, uh, w as their wife, nigga, attacking the city. Come on, my nigga, let's not do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not blind to the, the, the dark realities of the world. I guess so. There's a lot of violence in this show. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's gun violence, there's drug sales, there's a lot of shady business dealings. There's also, you know, there's heartbreak and there's relationship problems, and yeah. you know, it's basically SpongeBob the world Cowboy. that we grew up with as kids when our lives were innocent. Is uh, it's become like our lives now where we're adults, and it's it's not so innocent. Essentially, it's it's SpongeBob on crack. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you don't have to tell me say. about the fuckery that's afoot there, man. I'm still checking over my shoulder daily just in case Dankton's around the corner or something airing it out. <laughs> like it's it's scary. Like you you've got some villains out there. Karen's getting run through by everyone with a pulse in bikini bottom. Like, that bitch is everywhere. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, she she definitely had her time around there, but I feel like she really brought it back to uh to how things are meant to be with that vengeance song. But you gotta watch out for Dankton, too, man. Like, he, he's a block spinner. He's an op shot. And, and speaking on that, of, uh... Oh, yeah, nah, nah. He not from America. Or he's got an accent. I, I, I caught you, nigga. I caught you, Glorb! Nah, the way you said op shotta. First of all, op shotta, nigga, you gotta be from somewhere where they speak, have island slang, right? Like top shotta, dun dota. So I don't know if you're Jamaican, but the UK, huh? Africa, huh? You talking to a Nigerian straight from a village in Nigeria. Nigga, I'm telling you, when you say oh, shotta, listen, listen. He, he's a block spinner. He's an op shotta. And An opshada. Opshada. First of all, opshada is not something an American nigga would say. Yours, I caught you. That's a hint. You got some sort of accent. Maybe you are American, but your origin is somewhere else. Opshada. Even the way you said it. Opshada. Yeah, nigga. What is you, Australian? Hold yeah, on, you know, one she, more time. she definitely had her time around there, but I feel like she really brought it back to, uh, to how things are meant to be with that vengeance song. But you gotta watch out for Dankton, too, man. Like, he, he's a block spinner. He's an op shot. And, and speaking on that, shot. Of, uh, That's all I, I will say this. Australian. So I'm, I'm not too sure when this track is gonna, uh, when this uh, interview is gonna drop before or after, but yeah, we're basically, we will be seeing the return of Dankton very soon. And oh, things you know, are gonna get pretty hectic. Spinning, and maybe. people might even say things are about to get a bit. Puffy. She she might be taking this to motorboat school. That that's that's all I'm gonna really say about her. But in terms oh, of other is, characters before, coming into this show, I do want to get the entire cast. So pretty much every single character from the SpongeBob series. In Good, cause I was waiting for the chocolate nigga to appear. Cause I know he, bro, he gonna have all the. He the type of nigga put the gun down and just bite your face, nigga. Chocolate. I've been waiting for chocolate, nigga. Cause he a menace. He a menace. He was looking for Patrick and SpongeBob a whole op episode for some chocolate, so I know he's finna crash out, nigga. Where that nigga at? Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. SpongeBob's parents, huh? The return of Larry. Where Larry at? Into the Gorbiverse, and you know the my leg guy. Come on now. And you've got that many personalities mixing, and there's so many different characters. You're I'm sorry. One more. The Hashling and Slasher, huh? Nosferatu. We waiting on all of them. I'm to run into to so much fuckery. So I can't really say too much, but I'm thinking that 
Bikini Bottom might need a mayor soon, and we may have to have a little bit of an election. But you never know what could happen. I've heard those things get pretty violent. Yeah, anything can happen. Anything uh -oh. can go wrong there. Uh -oh, what's, your violence. what's the track you're most proud of? What's the favorite track you've worked on? Yeah, no, that, that's a hard one. So, I think in terms of the song that I think bangs the hardest, it's gotta be the bottom two. And I think everyone knows that too. That song is fucking crazy. It goes off. And I think that song, uh, I think a lot of people resonated with it because it went above and beyond the whole SpongeBob universe and into, you know, just a banger, a viral banger. And I guess uh, coming from that, I think a personal favorite of mine has to be Vengeance. Rapping as Karen was, uh, was such a challenge, but that was a heap of fun. I really He's loved that rapper. one. It and works. I, I also, I gotta give a shout out to Can Gangsters Cry. I, I really do not make that type of music uh, too, too often as my main artist project. I'm not known for it at all. So to do that track and, and see how well it was received and see people genuinely just loved hearing it, even though it was so different to everything else we've done, it was honestly heartwarming. It was amazing. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, experimenting. I, I bet this is a really nice creative outlet to try things you don't normally do in your mainline projects. Yeah, I mean, the the whole thing that makes it so exciting and new is I'm not writing from my perspective, you know, so I get to dive into these characters and, like, it, man, it, as my fun. main artist project, I'm I'm never going to sit there and talk about jellyfishing or spinning the block and leaving holes in them like Spongebob, you know, it just can't happen. So the fact that I get to do this like this, it's so, it's it's really good. It's like a creative writing exercise. So you, you, in your main artist project, you're not going to say spinning the block on them. The jellyfish part, yeah, that's that's whatever. But you know, I'm, I'm in here like Sherlock Holmes right now. Wait a minute. So are you saying that your main artist profile, you don't be rapping gangster? Because when you said spin the block, he said, I don't say spin the block, put holes in them like SpongeBob. And it, like Uzi Vert could say that. You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even double tape. My fucking uh, Fifty Cent could say that when he was at top. The Meek Mill could say spin the black, leave a hole in a nigga, the square nigga like SpongeBob. You can hear that. So, so now I'm thinking he's a rage type artist. He's gotta have some sort of accent. So, and he isn't really like a gangster or doesn't have like gun bars because you don't really gotta be gangster for that. I mean, a gun is a gun. So it's like. Huh, so you must be like a turn up. Let me find out you Playboy Cardi, nigga. Let me find out you Cardi, nigga. But Cardi be rapping about nothing. Hold on, who the fuck? Huh, I feel like low-key that's a good piece of, a good clue, though. I think niggas ain't gonna catch that. I caught that one. And it's also, I get to dive into these uh, characters, and in a way, like, I, I'll find myself taking on attributes of these guys when I'm done in the recording session. Like, oh... I'll have an imprint of Dankton in my brain, which uh, I gotta watch out for that one. No, it's awesome, man. Like, I get to really awesome, dive man. into this and Accent. fully express myself in different ways. It's insane. I love it. Yeah, I totally get that. So then, I'm sure you know of some of the other SpongeBob AI-related artists. Have you listened to, like, Boy What and all of them? Oh, yeah, of course. So, yeah, Boy Watt is fire. Uh, he actually DM'd me shortly after he started because uh, he was like, oh, yeah, the Gorb stuff inspired me, blah, blah, blah. And we had a great chat. He, he seems like a lovely dude. Fully support what he's doing. Uh, as well as that, there's your boy Sponge, who is amazing. Sponge. He's been at it for years. That guy's amazing, too. We've spoken your on Discord and that. Your boy the first person that I ever heard doing this stuff, by the way. So, to me, he's a pioneer. Great guy. And uh, you got to give props as well to Odwin. I'm, I'm not sure if he's still doing this stuff, but his shit was fire, man. He was really dope. So, big love to him too let's shout out the animation because another thing that really stood out about Facts! the bottom two when it really popped the off was people f like talking about not only is the music incredible but the visuals that accompany your tracks are always top notch as well your animator is thrilled to will correct at least for some of them yeah yeah so the the 3d guy who does mo most of the gorb stuff is thrilled to will and then uh, a lot of the earlier videos too stuff like the bottom number one that was done by a guy called Cyrenek, and and he's awesome and I guess aside from that, too, so those guys do all the 3D stuff, most of my videos and whatnot, but for the short-form content that's on TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that, we mostly go with these 2D kind of animations and skits, so the people that do, do those are, there's a guy called Silly Incorporated, he's an absolute legend, and there's a guy called Fell, Fell Animated, I believe is his Instagram, and he yeah, is dope, man, so both of those guys are, are awesome, and... I know. always love to get a shout-out to the animator, because y'all, I'm telling you, y'all do a lot of the lifting in that shit. Glorb's music is good, 
that that has to work first. But the animation, the visuals, t- boy, it wouldn't be the same without the visuals. The music would still be hitting, but you know the whole. MCU of it wouldn't be hitting. The whole cinematic universe wouldn't be hitting the same way if I didn't see Karen. You know what I mean? If I didn't see Plankton dual wielding, Dankton dual. You feel me? If I didn't see the crab up in the. You know what I mean? The flame on in there. You know, Will and Serenac too, this. They're a massive part of what makes this whole reality come to life, you know, because I can make all the music and do all that, but being able to see these characters dive into this world and actually being able to see them spin the block and do all this it's yeah that's what brings it all to life so Fact, shout out to those guys for, yeah. out to the anime. so i don't know if even you knew this but just to further drive home the point of how deep the gentleman's influence is thrill to will is actually the animator behind one of our music videos called perfect oblivion a couple of years back so he is a fantastic guy he also was the mastermind behind a game that i was addicted to speed running called Mr. Krabs overdoses on ketamine and dies. I speed ran that <laughs> Wait, game. Wait, he made that? Yeah, he made that game. That's his game. What? Oh man, that, that's like a Narbar moment for me. I I can't even I can't even believe that. That's wild, man. It, I, he's never not once brought up in conversation with me that he made that game. I played that game too, dude. That's so weird. What the hell? No, he's way too humble to bring up like his success in his career. He is such a talented guy. Like. You, you you've got a great team around you and someone like Thrill the Will on the tell, on the staff is such team. a huge like like shining star to have there. So yeah, kudos to everyone you've built up around you, your two D team, three D team, yeah, absolutely top notch shit. Oh no, h- hell yeah, man. And that even gets me thinking, like I I might have to look at making a Gord video game. I might have to jump off hey. this call soon and uh, have hey. a little chat to Mr. Will, huh? The, the past few months what? of my life... What? Playing Spongebob uh, with the blicker, dude? Oh, my GTA Spongebob? Nigga, we gonna get that before we get GTA 6, nigga. Hold, let me find out we gonna get GTA Spongebob before we get GTA 6. Let me find that out, bro. Glorb, I'm playing that shit. <laughs> I'm for surely playing that shit. What? Nigga, I'm finna pick Spongebob Patch and go crazy, nigga. Finna go crazy in that city, boy. Little bikini bottom. I'm finna, what? Spinning on everybody, nigga. Um, with my main artist project and with Glorb have been absolutely insane. So I guess mostly what I just want to say is thank you. So to anyone out there who's watched my stupid ass Spongebob videos or stuck around or dove into the story like, I truly, I truly, truly appreciate you. Thank we you for being a part you, of this. Lord, and fast. to you as well, Charlie, thank you so much for, for having me on here and, and giving this a platform, man. Like, I appreciate that for real. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you guys are extremely talented. Like, it's hard not yeah. to talk about how great what you're doing is, especially using a tool like AI, which has an extraordinarily negative reputation. Using it for a purpose you are is exactly, like, the best use of it. It's harmless, creative, it's fun, it's engaging, like, it's something that deserves the praise, so you've earned all your flowers here, like, I can't wait to see where Glorb is in a year from now, because I really do think, maybe, maybe you don't do the Las Vegas Sphere, maybe there are a bunch of sticklers over there, or whatever, at the Salty Spittoon, but if you start doing, like, the Glorb live concerts and all of that, like, I really yeah, think it's, the sky's the limit for it something like this, you guys are super talented. No, thank you, man, and yeah, like I said, like, none of this would be I guess possible without the people supporting me and also the team involved in making this from the animators to yeah. the producers and everything. So, yeah, yeah I just want to say thank you, man. And um, I guess one thing that we have really uh, been looking into as a team is kind of creating our own Glorb television show. And it, nothing's in works yet, but the idea is there. That's where I start feeling like you might start getting into a little issue with the big folks at uh, Nickelodeon, if him or Viacom or whoever owns SpongeBob now, that might be full episodes. Now I, I'm down. I'm down. I'm just trying to look out for you because you know them niggas be oppy. Niggas be moving very oppy. I'm just trying to help you out. So them niggas, them lawyers will come spin your fucking. You know what I mean? Don't come spin your. You know what I mean? Don't come break your goddamn, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm just trying to help you out, gang. That's all. I could be wrong, though. Keep it going. <laughs> I would love to have, like, an Adult Swim-esque, hip-hop-infused, violent-ass kind of kids show. I think it'd be, be sick. Fire. But, um, that would yeah, be fire! That would be fire! Yeah, nothing concrete yet. Let's just, uh, let's hope I don't fumble the bag. 
that's all I got on my end. If there's anything else you want to talk about, mention, feel free. Let me know. I think uh, I think we're about done here. But Charlie, genuinely, thank you so much for having me on. And anyone watching this shit, I appreciate you. My name is Glorb, and uh, until next time, see you in bikini. Hey, that shit was fire. And hey, um, Charlie, you lying, bro? You not bad at interviewing. All it takes to be a good interviewer to me is ask the questions people want to hear and then shut up and let the people answer it. That's why, to me, Vlad is one of the worst interviews. There's a lot of bad interviewers nowadays who interview as a way of putting out their own content. So they want it, it, you can clearly tell the interviews about them more than it's who they're interviewing. But that was a great interview. You asked all the questions I wanted to know. Literally, I couldn't think of another question that I, <laughs> uh, I, I would have. It was a full-fledged interview. You let the man talk. It was about Glorv. Man, I'm ready, bro. Glorv video game, TV show, merch. I'm here.